Hi everybody, my name is Dane Powell. I'm a graduate student here in the uh, Mechanical Engineering Department at Rice University. And today I'm going to be talking to you about Subversion. So Subversion, or SVN as you'll often see it abbreviated, is a version control system that's gonna help you to collaborate with your teammates and manage all of your documents and code and designs that you're gonna be generating this semester. If you're not familiar with a version control system in general, the best way to think of it is as a two-dimensional file system. So in a conventional file system, you have directories and you have files in those directories, um, and you can get to any of those files using a simple path, like c colon slash, you know, users, Dane Powell, whatever. Um, and if you save over a file in a traditional file system, the old version of that file is gone forever right, because the new one was saved in its place. And obviously that's a problem because, you know, what if you delete something important that's in the old file, or maybe you introduce a bug or a typo and you don't realize it for, you know, several days or weeks, and you wanna be able to correct that or find out who introduced it. Uh, there's no way to do that with a conventional file system. But you can do that with Subversion because it adds an extra dimension, and that extra dimension is time. So uh, with Subversion, you specify not just a path to a file, but also the revision number. And typically, you're going to be looking at what's known as uh, the head revision, the head version. That's the nomenclature that's used to refer to the most recent version of a file. But uh, like I said, if necessary, you can dig back through all the old versions of the file every time that, it, that uh, a new version was committed to the repository and find out when a specific change was introduced uh, and you know, go back to that version if necessary. And so again, this is very helpful because it prevents you from ever deleting anything permanently uh, and ever losing any work. And it also helps you to collaborate with your teammates because it allows two people or more to make changes to the same file at the same time and then to automatically merge those changes uh, if you've, if you've uh, put a little thought into it beforehand and, and made the changes correctly. <clears throat> and so that's what I want to talk to you about today, is how to use the system most effectively and to take advantage of all those features to make your life uh, in senior design this year uh, as painless as possible. Um, so do note that uh, you're not required to use Subversion in your day-to-day -day life in senior design, but you will be required to use it to turn in documents uh, um, at the end of each cycle. So I'm gonna start by showing you a video that will give you a really good overview of what Subversion is, uh, some of the concepts behind it, and why you would wanna use it. And then I'll uh, take some time to uh, talk about how to install Subversion and how to actually use it to manage your files for senior design. So sit back, relax, uh, and if you ever want to watch this again on your own time, uh, it's really easy to find. Just go to YouTube and type in Subversion, and it's the first thing that comes up. And I'll get back to you in about five minutes. Here's a quick outline of Subversion, what it is and why it's useful. So what is Subversion? Subversion is a tool that enables version control for files, such as PDF files, Word documents, and text files, like the code for a website or some kind of computer program. So Subversion enables version control for files? I'm not sure I understand, and why is it useful? Well, here's an example. Let's imagine we have a cookie recipe. The first version of this which we created on Tuesday, July the 1st, is pretty simple. Then, on Wednesday, July the 9th, we change our cookie recipe. We change the amounts of flour, butter and eggs, and we add some chocolate chips. A week later, we change the recipe again. And so on. A few months later, we have the 49th version of the recipe. This one has lost the chocolate chips. But our favorite niece is visiting, and she loves chocolate chips. So we really need to have a cookie recipe containing chocolate chips. How can we find the last version of the recipe that called for chocolate chips? And how does that differ from the version we have now? If we haven't been using Subversion, finding our chocolate chip recipe could be a real ordeal. Either we have 49 separate versions of the recipe to look through, because we saved each version as a separate file because we were organized, 
Or we have no idea what previous recipes said, because each time we change the recipe, we simply save the new version over the old version. But if we've been using Subversion, we have a record of every version, together with a message that says what's changed from one version to the next. For many types of files, such as text files, Subversion can also show us the exact difference between any two versions. It's also easy to make the working copy revert to any previous version you want. So Subversion keeps track of every version and lets us see exactly what's changed between versions and it lets us go back to a particular version in the past. Are there any other good things about it? Yes, it's a great aid to working collaboratively on code. So I start writing code and save it to Subversion. I improve my code and commit it to Subversion again. And then I get involved. I check out the latest version of your code and I make some changes to it. I can save these changes separately from your files if I create a branch. Meanwhile, I continue working on the main trunk version of the code and then you show me all the great changes you've been making and we decide to make a single version containing the best bits from both our code. In other words, we do a merge. Subversion will flag any conflicts between our different versions of code and let us decide what to do about them. It won't simply overwrite your files with mine, or vice versa. So Subversion makes it easier to collaborate. What else does it do? Well, it makes it very easy to move files between machines, or to make your files available to someone else. For instance, I have code on a laptop at work. I check the files into the Subversion repository, and then I can check them out to my home computer. I don't need to carry a flash drive, all I need is an internet connection to the Subversion repository. Then at home, let's say I make a change to a file, I can then check that into the repository, and when I'm next at work, I can update the version on my work laptop. So Subversion makes it easy for different machines to all have the most up-to-date version of a set of files. Does Subversion let you do anything else? Well, it's a great backup facility. Let's say you have code on your work laptop, and because you're smart, you checked it into the Subversion repository. And then your laptop dies. But you're not worried at all because Subversion can come to the rescue. All you need to do is to check out the code onto a new machine, and you're ready to go. So to sum up, Subversion makes your life easier? Yep. Good. It lets you track the differences between versions of files. And it aids in backup and transfer of files between machines. And it also helps with collaboration. Exactly. And we're back. All right. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I think that's a really good overview of um, what Subversion is and, and why it's useful. Obviously, you're probably going to be using it for something a little more than storing cookie recipes. Um, you could do that if you wanted to. But uh, again, what I'm gonna show you now is, is how to use it for senior design. So this will hopefully be the most useful part of the video. Um, before I get to that really quickly, uh, just so you know, I can put everything in context for you, I, I wanna talk a bit about the, the history of version control systems and the, the most common ones that you'll see out in the field uh, and why you would wanna use subversion over those others. Uh, of course, the main reason is that you don't have a choice for senior design, but uh, you may decide that you wanna use something else in, addi in addition to subversion this year. That's fine if you wanna use something on top of subversion. Uh, like I said before, you only need to use it to turn in documents at the end of each semester. So to give a brief history, uh, in the beginning, there was CVS, which stood for Concurrent Version System. And as you can tell from this lovely web page that looks like it's from 1990, um, CVS is a bit dated. Uh, it's, um, you will find it still being used occasionally, but I certainly would not recommend it to anybody who's just starting out. Um, so it's enough just to be aware that it does exist. It is similar to Subversion in a lot of ways. Uh, it's really the spiritual predecessor to Subversion uh, and that it, it's centralized just like Subversion is. So you have a central repository and then uh, you make working copies from that repository and you have branches and tags and things like that. Uh, but it's just, it's, it's much less user-friendly, much less mature than Subversion. 
Um, and so lately, uh, just in the past few years really, there's been a push towards distributed version control systems. And uh, some of these you may have heard of before. Uh, so Git is probably one of the most popular ones. So you may have heard of GitHub, and that's a place where uh, people can store uh, open source code and, and collaborate with others using Git, or you know, which is spelled G-I-T. Uh, and so what's different about that is that it's distributed as opposed to centralized, like Subversion. So instead of having one central repository that you check out working copies from um, with Git, everybody has a complete copy of the entire repository. And that's really useful because now, let's say you're on an airplane or in a cabin in the woods or anywhere where you don't have uh, internet access, you can still work on your code and make commits and make changes and switch branches and view the logs, all these things. Um, and you can do that much faster than you can with Subversion. So it's just a much nicer user experience. The downside uh, is just that it, it's a little less intuitive. It's a little less user friendly. So it's easier to, to uh, make a commit to your repository and then forget to sync up those changes with all the other repositories um, and then you know lose that if anything happens to your own computer. So um, it's a little tougher to understand, but it's also more powerful um, and a little faster and more efficient if you decide to get into that. Um, and so Git is really, I'd say it's it's almost the de facto standard for distributed version control systems. Um, and along with Subversion, it's it's the one of the two most popular version control systems uh, being used today, in my humble opinion. Um, and then a couple of others you may have heard of are Mercurial and Bazaar. Um, and those are kind of similar to, to Git and SVN. I, I won't go into detail there. But I just want you to be aware that these all exist and they're all options and you may be forced to use them at some point. But I'd really recommend for this course that you stick with either Git or Subversion. And today I'm just gonna talk to you about Subversion. So without further ado, let me show you how to uh, get rolling on that. So uh, how you're going to install and use Subversion is going to depend on what operating system you're using. So if you're using Windows, um, you should go to tortoisesvn.net and you should actually do this right now. Uh, you're going to get the most out of this video if you actually follow along uh, in real time and just pause it if necessary you know, to download and install the files and restart uh, whatever. But uh, yeah, I, do do try to do all this as I'm showing it to you, and and it'll make much more sense than if you're just kind of watching me doing it and not doing it yourself. So again, Tortoise SVN is the client that you want to be using for Windows. So go to the download page. Um, most of you can probably download the 64-bit version. If you're still on a 32-bit OS for some reason, that's fine. Download the 32-bit version, and that'll just take a second. And so through the magic of video editing, uh, here we are. We've, we've downloaded Tortoise SVN uh, and we're ready to install it. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I don't think there's anything in the install process that's gonna trip you up, but uh, we'll just go through here really quickly to be sure. Uh, so install this. Um, you can leave all these options uh, at their defaults. And we're done. Oh, very simple. And now you're ready to go. Now, if you're on uh, Mac OS X or on, um, on Ubuntu or another Linux distribution, uh, I'm afraid I don't have great news for you. There, there just aren't very many good graphical clients out there to, to let you access Subversion. Um, you can see what's available by just you know Googling Mac uh, OS X SVN GUI. Uh, and seeing what comes up. So versions is a pretty popular one, um, rapid SVN, uh, but you know, all these are, are not really ideal. There's just, there's not a de facto standard like there is for Windows. Uh, and the reason for that in part is that people who, who tend to use Subversion on Mac and on Unix systems uh, tend to be a little more comfortable with the command line client. And so they actually accessed Subversion, they accessed Subversion through the command line using commands like SVN checkout, SVN commit, things like that. Uh, and so that may be a good option for you. It's, it's not that much more difficult, but um, 
yeah, again, I'm afraid you're kind of on your own when it comes to a graphical client. Uh, um, if you are on Ubuntu, I found that Rabbit VCS is a is a pretty good uh, uh, pretty good graphical tool that's kind of equivalent to Tortoise SVN, um, and so you can give that a shot. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, let us know, and we'll we'll try to provide a, a some sort of document on Owlspace that uh, will maybe help out you Mac users and give you an overview of what some of your options are. So we've got our SVN client installed uh, and we're ready to get to work here. Uh, so if again, if you're not on Windows, I, I apologize. This, this tutorial will still be applicable. Uh, all the terminology is gonna be exactly the same. The, the server layout is gonna look exactly the same to you. Um, you're just gonna have to figure out how to do these same operations with your client. Uh, on whatever your operating system is, but but the principles are still the, are still the same. So uh, you've installed Tortoise SVN, awesome, and now you're ready to use it. So uh, one thing that trips people up initially is that Tortoise SVN is not like most other programs on Windows. Uh, so if you go to the Start menu here and open up the Tortoise SVN folder, uh, you'll see that there's this Tortoise SVN program and you'll be tempted to run that. That's not gonna get you anywhere. Uh, all that's gonna get you is an error message. The, the way that you actually use Tortoise SVN is through the uh, Explorer context menus. And so uh, what, what I mean by that is that if you wanna get started working on your project, you're gonna right click uh, on your desktop or in your documents folder, um, wherever you wanna start working and you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna choose SBN Checkout. And what that's gonna do is going to go to the repository uh, for Capstone Design, which is in the MUD data center. So it's very safe, very secure there, um, backed up nightly. And it's going to pull a working copy of your repository over to your computer so you can work on it locally. So initially this uh, window right here is gonna be blank. And what you want to enter for the URL is https colon slash slash svn.rice.edu slash r slash capstone. And make sure that the C in capstone is capitalized. And then slash 2012. And once you've done that, uh, go ahead and click this little dot 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 button over here. And it's going to ask for your username and password. This is just your net ID and password. Go ahead and click Save Authentication, um, unless you're sharing your computer account with somebody else. But I really recommend that you use your own account and click Save. That'll make your life a lot easier so you don't have to enter your name and password every five seconds. And so you should see something like this. Uh, so if we make this window a little bigger, on the left here, you can see here's the uh, the URL that we just accessed. So <clears throat> svn.rice.edu slash r uh, just points you to the, the SVN server for Rice. And then Capstone is actually the name of the repository. And then we have folders for each year. So you're going to go to uh, 2012. And then on the right here, you can see in the 2012 folder, uh, when you do this, this should look much more crowded. There should be many more folders. Uh, and each each team, each senior design team is gonna get their own folder, their own directory. So just for now, we're gonna uh, assume that my team is called Sprocket. That's gonna be my directory. So I'm gonna open that up and then click OK. And you'll see that now that's, uh, that URL has been filled here and Sprocket has been added to the end. And you can see that that's going to be checking out that working copy into a folder called Sprocket on my desktop. So that's awesome. Uh, you can leave this the same. Uh, remember I said that the head revision means just the most current, the most recent revision of, of those files. So you can leave that at default and click OK. And so you can see the status of it here. Uh, once you see completed, click OK, and you can see that we now have the Sprocket directory on our desktop. So you can see that we've got the Sprocket folder on our desktop here. So let's go ahead and open that up. Now, of course, because we just created this on the server and then checked it out, uh, this directory is empty. And 
uh, just to review terminology again, uh, we got this from our repository, which is on the server in the MUD data center. And this directory right here is actually called our working copy. And so any changes we make to files in this directory only exist on our computer here in this directory until we commit those changes back to the server. And uh, you'll notice this little green check mark here over the directory. That means that we have not modified any folders, any files within this directory since we last updated it or since we checked it out from the server. Uh, if we were to make any changes, that green check mark would change into a, a red exclamation mark or something like that, which you'll see in just a moment. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that the way that Subversion keeps track of those things, the way that it keeps track of whether you've made changes or not, is using this hidden directory here called .svn. So if we open that up, we can see that there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here. This is all metadata about your working copy. It's really important that you make sure to never touch that folder. Um, keep it hidden uh, and don't accidentally delete it or anything like that because that's gonna really mess up your working copy and make life difficult for you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hide that again so we can't see it and we won't be tempted to screw it up. So. Uh, the first thing we need to do is organize our directory for our team. So uh, one of your team members should just do this initially, and then uh, all the other all of your other team members can work on that. Uh, you know, once they've checked it out. Uh, so you're going to right click and say new folder, and let's go ahead and call this cycle one. So this is going to be the first round of documents that you have to submit, and let's create a document in here. And we're going to call this uh, your design context review. And so we're going to give this a nice title here and save that. And so if we go back up here to, to the Sprocket directory, you can see that that cycle one folder has a little question mark on it. And that's because that folder is currently unversioned. That means that subversion sees that it's there, but it's never seen it before and it doesn't know what to do with it. We need to tell it what to do with that folder. So we're gonna right click on it, go down to Tortoise SVN and click add. And this is gonna add that folder and everything within it to version control. So once we click OK and we see this completed message, now that changes to a plus. That means that uh, Subversion is now aware of this folder and it's keeping track of it, but it still only exists in our working copy. So we need to send that back to the server. And just to verify that, if we go down to Tortoise SVN and click on uh, repo browser, which is right here. Uh, again, this is gonna show us what everything looks like on the server right now. And we can see that that sprocket directory on the server is still empty, even though we've added this folder here in our working copy. So let's go ahead and commit that and, and see what happens. So we're gonna right click in this folder and go down to SVN commit. And we're going to add a log message. Uh, and this just helps you keep track of all your changes. So I might say added the design context review. Click OK. <clears throat> and again, wait for the completed message. Click OK. And you can see that now that, that blue cross has changed to a green check mark. And remember, like I told you before, that means that uh, this folder is now synced with the server and you have not made any changes with it. So that's good. So if we go back to the server here, back to the repository viewer, and we refresh that view, we can see that this folder now exists on the server, and so does our design context review. So now that file is safe and sound on the server, and for all intents and purposes, whatever you do to that file on your own computer, uh, even if you delete it and commit that back to the server, uh, that file will still exist in some form, and you can always get back to it. Uh, if you ever make any mistakes. So that's really useful. So uh, now let's say that uh, you want to actually make some changes to this file. Um, that's very easy to do. Uh, 
So uh, you're going to simply change that file, save it like you would normally, and you'll see that now we have a red exclamation mark here. That just means that you've changed that file since you last updated it, and you're just going to commit it to the repository. So just like that. So that should be your normal workflow. Uh, basically, you know, make changes to whatever files you need to make changes to, save those changes, and then once you're done working, commit those changes to the repository. Um, now, the best practice is to try to uh, keep your commits atomic. And what that means is that uh, every time you make a commit to the repository, it should be of uh, kind of one single feature set or one single set of changes. So it's best not to change a whole bunch of documents at once and then save them all and push them all to the repository in one single commit. Rather, it's, it's better to change a document, save it, commit it, change another document, save it, commit it. And that way, uh, if you ever need to make, you know, to revert those changes, it, that becomes much easier than if, if you're changing a whole bunch of things at the same time. Uh, but that's kind of an advanced topic. Hopefully you shouldn't have to deal with that too much. Just something to keep in mind. Now, something else that I talked about earlier that Subversion is really good for is collaboration. And so let's imagine that uh, one of your teammates comes along and wants to edit this at the same time as you. So what we can actually do is just copy, uh, make another copy of that working copy on our desktop. We'll call this Sprocket2. And so as far as Subversion is concerned, uh, these are now two different working copies, and they could be on different computers. So that's what we're going to imagine here is that Sprocket, that's my copy, and Sprocket 2 is a teammate's copy, and they're working on it separately. And we're going to see what happens if we both edit this document at the same time. So let's say that uh, I was told to make the, uh, the body of the paper. So I'm going to say this is the body. And again, that's me making those changes. And let's say that my teammate comes along. And remember, they're still looking at the old version, uh, what's now the old version of this document. Let's say that uh, they fix a typo or, or expand the introduction. So they say, this is my new introduction. All right, so now, each of us have made changes to this document, and what we need to do is reconcile those changes. Now, hopefully, we've planned in advance for this. We both know that we're going to be making these edits, but um, assuming we haven't, let's say that uh, Teammate 2 commits those changes. And now you see that turns to a green check mark. And now I try to commit those, the changes that I made. Subversion is going to get really happy, unhappy with us, and we can see that we got this error message saying that our resource is out of date. What that means is that someone else has made a change to that file and committed that change to the repository at the same time or before we made a change to it. And what we need to do is update our file and try again. So when we update, now we see this uh, exclamation mark. And again, that means that there's a conflict in that file because our teammate has made the change, uh, made a change at the same time as us. So we need to click Edit Conflicts. And if we make this bigger, we can see now on the left is the change that my teammate made. Remember, they edited the introduction. And on the right is the change that I made. Remember, I added a body to the paper. And I need to merge these changes. So down here is the merged version. And so I'm going to right click on this line and I'm going to say use text block from theirs. Remember, because I want to incorporate their changes. And then for the body, say use text block from mine because I want to keep my changes to the body. And so now down here on the bottom is the merged version of that paper. It has both my teammates changes with the new introduction and my changes with the new body. And I'm going to go up here and click Mark as Resolved and close that. And now, finally, I'm going to commit those changes to the repository. And you can see that this completed successfully. And just to verify, 
If we go back to the repository using the repo browser, and you can see this is kind of slow again because it's having go to go to the server for to look for all these uh, all this information, and that's why Git is is a lot faster because it stores that locally. Anyway, now we can open that design context review on the server and verify that indeed. It has the new introduction and it also has the body. So both of our changes were incorporated successfully. Huzzah! So that's that's the gist of how you collaborate. Um, oh, and keep in mind that now your teammate's copy is also slightly out of date. Uh, so before your teammate goes and works on it, they need to update that folder. They're gonna click SVN update and it'll pull down the new copy from the server. You see it says updated that file to the new revision and now they have the latest version as well. And it's always good practice before you start working to update uh, your files so you always have the latest version, and that way there's less chances of having a, um, a conflict where you know someone made a change to the file at the same time as you. Now, if you just stop here, uh, you'll know everything you need to know to, to use a subversion for capstone design, but I'd like to show you a couple more advanced topics that uh, will make your life a little easier, especially if you're using Subversion on a day-to-day -day basis. So if we open up this folder again, and we're going to delete this the second copy because we don't need that anymore. Um, you can see that you know we have the cycle one folder that we created, and in SVN terminology, we call this folder a branch. So let's say that you get to the end of cycle one, uh, and you need to start working on your documents for cycle two. Uh, of course, you could just overwrite what's here, uh, but you know it's it's quite possible that we want to come back to this and and see what exactly it is we submitted for cycle one. And in fact, we do want you to to preserve that on its own because uh, uh, you know the t the graders need to be able to to find your documents for each cycle uh, as easily as possible. So what you want to do when you start working on cycle two documents is right click and go to Tortoise SVN Repo Browser. And we see our cycle one folder here. What we want to do is right click and say copy to and change that to cycle two. And so what this is doing is it's making a copy of that folder and everything in it on the server. And it's creating a new branch for us to work in. And so we can see that it still has a design context review in it. And what's special about SVN in this case is that it's doing this very efficiently. So it's not storing an entirely new version of that document. It's just storing a link to the old document plus a record of any changes you make to it in the cycle two folder. Now on the surface, that's all transparent. All you see is a new copy of the document, but under the hood, it's doing that very efficiently. So it's always best to make, if you're gonna make copies, if you're gonna make new branches, to do it through the repo browser like this, and that'll store everything very efficiently. If we go back to our working copy, um, again, because we haven't updated this, we still only see cycle one, so we need to update by going to SVN update and that'll pull down cycle two. And now we can begin making changes to our design context review for cycle two. And this way we can always go back um, and see cycle one really easily. And just to reiterate, the reason we do this, the reason we create new branches instead of just working on the old document is just uh, for sake of convenience. Because like I said, you could click on this document and right click and go to Tortoise SVN and show log and this will show us all the changes to, that we've made to this since it was created. And so if we wanted to, we could just keep working on this one copy of the document endlessly until the end of senior design for all the different cycles. But um, it would be very hard to go back and, and choose which uh, document was submitted for which cycle. Um, so by creating a new branch, uh, we know exactly what was submitted for each cycle and we can work on those two cycles separately. So let's talk about for a second what should and should not be in your SVN repository. Um, theoretically, you have unlimited storage here, uh, so you shouldn't have to worry about space constraints, running out of space, anything like that. But 
practically you do want to store uh, kind of the bare minimum in the SVN repository because remember you're going to be, uh, whenever you do updates, you're gonna have to pull changes to those files down to your computer. Um, and depending on your network connection, that can take a while. So uh, in general, you only, only wanna keep uh, what I would call source documents in the repository. So uh, what I mean by that is that if you're, for instance, uh, working on a software project, you're gonna have source code, and then you're also gonna have the executable code that's, that's compiled from that source code. So in that case, you only wanna keep the source code in the repository, and you want to keep the executables and all those big binary files out of the repository if possible. Um, similarly, if you have any big, uh, you know, movie files, uh, big picture files, things like that, you can put them in the repository. But um, if there's something that, if there are files that are not going to be changing very often, it might be better to store those separately, uh, so that they're not taking up a whole bunch of space and kind of slowing down uh, the whole repository. And so it's kind of a judgment call as to what you include and what you don't. Uh, as you get to work with it more, you'll begin to realize you know, what, what's best kept in the repository and what's not. Um, the other problem with, with keeping binary files like pictures and certain types of Word documents and movies in the repository, uh, the problem with that is that Subversion can't merge those files. So let's say that you make a change to a picture and your teammate makes a change to the picture at the same time. Um, Subversion is not going to be able to merge those like you did with that text document, like you did with the design context review. So one way to get around that is to use uh, picture formats that are uh, vector-based. So sometimes it's unavoidable. You are going to have to put big binary files in the repository, but if you can avoid it, that's always good. Um, and the way that you actually keep those files out, uh, let's assume that uh, you know you're making a video, right? And I have this huge file in my in my working copy here, and I don't want that to go to the repository. Uh, all I'm going to do is right-click on that and go to Tortoise SVN and say Add to Ignore List, and add just that file or all movie files uh, to the Ignore List, and then commit that to the repository. And once I commit that, then um, now we can go to the repository and we can see that uh, that movie file is, is not in the repository, even though it is in our working copy. And so we can still reference that in our document here, but it's not going to get synced to everybody else's computer. So um, that, you know, that's one tool that you can use. And so the final uh, aspect of this that I want to talk about is uh, more advanced usage of the system. So uh, if all you're doing is submitting documents with Subversion, this is really all you need to know. But if you want to actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis, you may want to have uh, a slightly more complex uh, directory format than this. So uh, remember I said that cycle one and cycle two are branches? Well, normally if you have an SVN repository, you actually create a dedicated branches folder. And similarly, you create a dedicated tags and trunk folder. And each of those folders, branches, tags, and trunk has a specific meaning. So I'm gonna right click those and go ahead and add those to the repository and commit them. And now I'm gonna do some cleaning up. So I'm gonna to go to the repo browser and move some files around. Whenever you're moving files around or renaming files, it's always best done directly through the server. Um, I'm not gonna go into the details of why that is, but it's better to do that on the server and not in your working copy. Uh, if you do that in your working copy, Tortoise SVN tends to get confused and it causes issues. So I'm gonna to go to the Sprocket folder here and I'm gonna go ahead and put cycle one and cycle two into my branches folder. And again, that's just a, a way of organizing the directory a little more efficiently. But now what I can do, let's say that um, we've gotten to the end of cycle one and we know that we're not gonna make any more changes to this uh, directory to the files in this directory, and we want to preserve a copy of all the files just like they are as we submitted them for posterity. 
what we want to do is right click and say copy to and we're going to change branches to tags and call this cycle one submitted and if we wait a second for this to update we can go to the tags folder now and see that uh, indeed this folder that we just created is there and so in SVN parlance, um, you never ever want to touch something that's in the tags directory once you've created it. And now, and again, the reason is that now we can always go back and see exactly what this document looks like when we submitted it. If for some reason we need to make changes to it, um, then we're going to go and work on the copy that's in the branches directory. And maybe we need to create a new tag that says, uh, you know, submitted for revision in the tags directory and you can do that. But you're always working in the branches directory, never in the tags directory. And finally, there's this trunk folder, uh, which you may be wondering about. Um, so the trunk folder is where you put the latest version of every file. So uh, let's say that you know we're working on this design context review. What we want to do is make a copy of that and put it into the trunk folder. So again, if we wait for this to update, and then we look in the trunk folder, and we see the design context review is there. So if you're going to use this, this directory layout, which again is, is uh, very traditional. Anytime you're working with a subversion repository with a company or in a lab, um, most of the time you're going to see it laid out like this into the branches, tags, and trunk folder. If you're going to organize it this way, the way that you should work is to always make the latest changes to the trunk version of a file first, and then copy those changes to the branch uh, that, that as applicable. And then when you're done working on a branch or when you hit a major milestone, like you're submitting uh, uh, you know, one cycle of documents, you copy that branch to the tags folder. So again, the information flow is from trunk to branches to tags. Uh, and uh, that's just a way, again, of keeping everything organized. There's nothing really special about these folders. I and mean, it's not like Subversion is going to force you to use it this way. Um, this is just convention. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. But I think that should put you on a pretty good track for using S, uh, for using Subversion in Senior Design. Again, if you have any questions, uh, let us know. My email address is danep at rice.edu, and I'm happy to help, and I hope you find this useful.